joyful memories there. Christmas time is here. We'll be drawing near. Oh, that we could always see such beauty through the Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Newman United Methodist Church, a place where love works. I'm Pastor Ryan, and I'm so glad to be spending this second Sunday of Advent with you all this morning. I want you to know that you are welcomed here no matter who you are. At Newman, we welcome everyone. You're welcomed here no matter who you love or how you identify, no matter your political affiliations, your faith background, family situation, age, race, everybody is welcomed here at Newman. And more than just welcome you, we invite you to be a part of our church family, to walk with us in the ways of Jesus Christ, the ways of peace, love, justice, mercy, and compassion, and peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Today's actually kind of light on announcements. Uh, I know that Cheryl has one to share. Matthew, you've got one too. I invite you to look at the back of your bulletins. There's more announcements there too, uh, just to keep up on everything happening here. If you are Uh, new or need to update your contact information with the church office, I invite you to fill out one of these welcome cards that are in the back of the pews, and you can turn those in later in the service when the offering plate comes around. This will make sure that we get your contact information so that we can keep in touch with you about all the wonderful things happening here at Newman United Methodist Church. Uh, Matthew, come on up. Well, a unintended shameless plug because three of the usher greeters, including myself, are also Sunday school um, teachers. So I'm looking for Sundays. I'm looking for ushers for the 10th, the 17th, Christmas Eve, and the 31st. So essentially December. But I also need more people who can help sign up, and we'll help you. We'll train you. This is a friendly crowd. Uh, you'll succeed because some of us being in Sunday school can do the greeting but can't do the ushering. So please see me at coffee hour, and um, I guess see Pastor Ryan if you're interested in helping with Sunday school, because we can use that help too. Absolutely. Yeah, just a note about coffee hour. Uh, We're having coffee hour in the sanctuary today. We've had a couple of uh, special events here this weekend, and just to save the staff and volunteers some time, we've left things set up uh, here in the parlor in the sanctuary, so you don't got to go far uh, to get your coffee and cookies after church today. Uh, Cheryl, come on up. As you know, Newman's single family ministry has been helping families since 2015. That is eight years of the ministry because of the generosity and kindness of this wonderful congregation. You folks make it possible, have made it possible for us to assist families this year with car repair, school clothes, utility bills, and housing needs. Thank you so much. We are now in the cold month of December, and there are more cold months ahead. Everybody's turned their heat on, which means the power is on and the electric bill is going. Last week, we did dip into the single parent family ministry 
uh, to fund for a single dad and help him with his power bill. We're, we're finding that this is becoming a real challenge for families. Um, this is the third family that we have helped with a power bill in the last three months. So we really expect to see a continued need in this area and a continued need of, for the referrals that we're going to get regarding power bills. It would be great if you can help us keep that fund full this winter so we can jump right into action as soon as those requests come in. We actually helped a mom get her power turned back on about a month and a half ago. So it's a real need. If you can help out, that'd be great. Just put on there, it's for the single parent family ministry when you give. And thank you to all you wonderful people. Thank you, Cheryl. Pat, do you have one? Come on up. I actually have a very heartfelt thank you uh, to everyone who has contributed to the community resource room. Uh, some donations came in on uh, Thursday around midday, and some of the things that were brought in that day walked out that afternoon. So I want to say thank you so much. We are getting a plethora of socks, so we're kind of good on that uh, right now. <laughs> um, and uh, I would like to direct you uh, to the Amazon wish list. Somebody actually sent something to us from the, from the wish list that we have. And if Ryan was in the office that day, he would have thought I was nuts because I was doing a happy dance. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Some of those things on the wish list are still on sale due to Christmas. So if you need to look at a copy, I've got a hard copy at my desk if you want to give it a look-see for those of you that um, don't do computers. Thank you so much with all my heart. The folks that are coming in uh, that have needs are so appreciative. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pat. And thank you to all those who helped contribute to uh, make our community resource center successful. This Advent season, we are seeking to root ourselves in hope and healing. As we await the coming of the Christ child, we long for a world where peace abounds, where violence is but a distant memory. The writer in the Psalms says that God will speak peace to God's people when we turn our hearts to God. Turning our hearts to God means turning away from violence, turning away from oppression, turning away from death-dealing systems that exploit the poor and contribute to a violent world. When we turn our hearts to God, steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Will you join me in singing? Please stand in body or in spirit for our call to worship. Good morning. We gather today as a people of peace. When violence erupts around us, we respond. And when we struggle to find peace within ourselves, We gather as a people of peace. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Holy One, we come before you longing for peace. In a world filled with so much violence, give us the words to speak of peace. Give us the hands to mend wounds. Give us the feet to accompany our neighbors. 
Help turn us away from selfish desires and instead turn us towards your kingdom of peace and justice. Breathe your divine presence into us, filling us with peace, peace, peace. Uh, today, uh, all of our hymns are going to be in the hymnal. We don't have all the words on the screens, so I invite you to pull out those hymnals. Our opening hymn today is number 431, Let There Be Peace on Earth. <laughs> be seated. I invite our Advent candle lighters to come on forward as we light this candle of peace. Today our candle lighters are volunteers with our B Street Food Pantry who serves hundreds of people each week with healthy uh, foods to keep their families fed. So I invite these folks forward. Today we light the second Advent candle. This is the candle of peace. Its flame reminds us that even in a world plagued with violence, peace is always an option. Our world needs people of peace. It needs people with the audacity to, to proclaim peace, even in the midst of violence, to proclaim that there is a better way a way that does not require an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. May this flame remind us of God's desire for humankind to live in peace and harmony with one another. You join me in singing. Our reading today is from Psalm 85, verses 1 through 2 and 8 through 13. 
Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Our next hymn is People Look East. It is number 202 in the large hymnal. 202. The time is here seated. I invite any children we have to come forward for a brief children's message. I have a prayer that I would like to share with y'all. Come on up. Good morning. So today is the second Sunday of Advent. You can see we have two. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> I'll do this more gently. We have two candles <laughs> lit. <laughs> see, so last Sunday, we lit the first candle, which was the candle of hope. And we talked about being people of hope. And today, we lit the candle of peace. Then next Sunday, we'll light the candle of joy and then the candle of love. And then on Christmas Eve, we get to light the Christ candle, that big white one in the middle. So today, we're talking about peace. Do you all know what peace is? What do you think peace is? 
No harm, causing no harm. Yeah, that's a very Methodist thing to say. You probably didn't know that, but do no harm is the number one rule in the United Methodist Church, so good on you. What comes to mind when we we think of peace? Y'all can just shout it out. No war. Yeah, coffee may may help give us a a sense of peace. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, looking after others' needs. Absolutely. Yes, love for each and every one. These are all things that help bring peace to the world. And you probably know this. You may not watch the news, but you probably hear about things happening in the world that are maybe scary or or, uh, not so peaceful. Or even in our own lives, sometimes things aren't so peaceful, especially around the holidays. There's so much going on and things happening and your family might be coming over, you might be traveling. There's all sorts of stuff happening. And it can be hard to be peaceful even in this season of peace. So I'm going to teach you a prayer today that you can use when you're maybe not feeling very peaceful inside yourself. And you all can uh, take up this practice too. But we're going to close our eyes. We're going to take a deep breath in. And as we breathe out, we're going to say peace. Peace. Do it again. Peace. So when you are feeling stressed or when you feel like there's not much peace around you or you hear of things not being very peaceful, you can take a moment and breathe peace as a prayer. Oh, amen? Amen. All right, y'all can go back to your seats today. It's a communion Sunday, so there's no Sunday school today, but we will have Sunday school next week. Our gospel story today is from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. As it was written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the whole Judean region and all the people of Jerusalem were going on out to him and were baptized by John in the Jordan River, confessing of their sins. Now John was clothed clothed with camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, there was one who was more powerful than I, and he is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm one of those people that loves the Christmas and holiday season. You know, immediately following Thanksgiving, but I wouldn't dare do it a day before, I put out the Christmas decorations, I turn on the Christmas music, and this was our tradition growing up, too, where the, we were the house on the street that always had the most Christmas lights during this season. My mom would decorate our house to look like a Christmas and winter wonderland. She had her Christmas villages, her Santa collection, and garlands around the house, And on that first Saturday in December, we'd watch the Christmas parade in downtown Springfield, the oldest and coldest in the state. (laughs) I know that from firsthand experience, marching in the marching band for many of those parades. (laughs) Then after the parade, we'd always go out to the tree farm and cut down our Christmas tree. And these memories, they bring back a sense of warmth and peace uh, to my heart when I think on them now. But what I find my mind often leaving out is the lack of peace that often accompanies these Christmas festivities. As an, old, as an adult, I often wonder, how did my parents manage all of this while both of them working full-time jobs and working overtime with four children who didn't always get along or behave? Not me, of course. I was an angel. <laughs> You know, we had holiday seasons where my dad would get laid off from his job at the mill or where Santa's workshop uh, suffered budget cuts. And I think a lot of us are in the same boats. We love the warmth and the peace that comes with this season, 
but we kind of shoot ourselves in the foot with all the effort that goes into making the season special. I know that I can feel that way sometimes with my work at the church. And for many of you who have been volunteering at all of our events this week, and you might be feeling a lack of peace as well. I'm looking at Barbara over here. <laughs> this is one of the busiest seasons for church pastors, employees, and volunteers as we work long hours to make this season special and meaningful. And ex- as exhausting as it can be, this really is our pleasure and our joy to do this work. So as I reflected on peace this week, I got to thinking more and more about what it means to be a person of peace, to truly embody peace in our lives. And as I thought on it, I came to realize that I don't think peace is necessarily a lack of busyness. I don't think peace means that you don't have a full calendar or aren't stressed by the often chaotic season of Christmas. The peace that we find with God is a different kind of peace. It's not as simple as just not being busy or stressed. It's a combination of a, an inner peace that informs an outward peace towards how we behave with others. And this kind of peace can exist whether or not there is chaos around us. And there is great hope in that, because that means even in Gaza, even in Ukraine, even in Sudan, there is peace. There are people of peace. The world around them may not reflect it, but even in the midst of unthinkable violence, peace can find a home. And that should give us hope. In the psalm that was read today, the writer says that God forgives the people and restored their fortunes, and that God the Lord will speak peace to the people, to those who turn to God in their hearts. And it's in that moment when we turn our hearts to God where steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, where righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Another word for turning our hearts to God is the Greek word metanoia. It literally means to start over or to turn a new direction or maybe even to change your mind. It's often translated in the New Testament as the word repent. And when we hear that word repentance, Like in our gospel story today, it often causes us to think of street corner preachers or perhaps fundamentalist churches or or even punishment. You know, a believe in Jesus or else kind of mentality. But really, whenever we see that word in the Bible, that word repentance, or in our hymns or in our liturgies, it simply means to turn towards God, to turn towards Jesus, God's love made manifest. We often want to make repentance about changing our lifestyles, and sometimes that is what is called for. But I also think God is after more than just that. I mean, changing things in our lives can, of course, be a good and holy thing. But repentance isn't just about cleaning up your act, because what metanoia means is to snap out of it, to turn a new direction, to think new thoughts. And this can be so hard to do. Correcting behaviors is one thing, but changing our hearts, that's a whole new level of difficult. Amen? Amen. (laughs) There are forces that, that seem to trap us where we are. They tell lies about who we are and our place in the world. These forces like tyrants holding us in bondage to a certain way of thinking, a certain way of living... When John the Baptist was preaching repentance and baptizing folks in the Jordan River, he was doing so under the occupation of the Roman Empire. In the Luke version of this story, it begins with the line, In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler over Galilee, and so on and so on. And the writer goes on to list all the rulers and forces and powers that were bearing down on the people at this time. In the Matthean version of this uh, story, John called out to the religious leaders, uh, some of whom were corrupt and benefited from the rule of the Roman Empire. In fact, the emperors would lavish, lavish extravagant gifts on certain religious leaders in order to get them to keep a false sense of peace among their people, to keep them compliant with the way things were. When I read these texts, I wonder what it must have felt like to be ruled 
by the emperor Tiberius to be under the domination of Pilate. I wonder if at the time, to the people of Judea, the tyranny of these men who were named in the verses felt inescapable. I wonder about this because I think we find ourselves in the midst of powers and principalities of this world that seem so powerful to us as to be inescapable, and we can't always see past them. I find myself in the chaos of a country and an ideological uh, prison, and I need some peace, real peace, not platitudes or cheerful sentiment. I need something more powerful more powerful than the forces of violence that rage around us. You know that that list of powerful men that I mentioned from the beginning of Luke's version of this story, those emperors and rulers and governors and power brokers, all those people who were so feared and powerful at that time, you know what? The only reason anyone knows their names, the only reason anyone even says their names today, The only reason these pathetic so-called powerful men are even remembered at all 2,000 years later is as a footnote to Jesus of Nazareth. Those who were so caught up in the powers and principalities of violence and empire and greed, whose power at the time they were alive felt so absolute, are only a footnote to Jesus. Jesus the Prince of Peace, the Man of Sorrows, the Friend of Sinners, the Forgiver of Enemies, Jesus, the the homeless dude who hung out with fishermen and sex workers and said that we should love our enemies. Can you imagine what a blow to Pontius Pilate that would be if he had any idea? So my prayer this week, when I just don't know what to pray, when I'm fearing feeling weary or a lack of peace within myself. I named every single thing and person that seems so powerful right now. So powerful that they feel perhaps inescapable. Rulers, tyrants, my own shortcomings, societal forces, and I named them and then I said footnotes. And y'all may remember this from last year. It's the same prayer I had last year. Pontius Pilate, footnote. Holiday stress, footnote. Anxiety, footnote. Student loan debt, footnote. A certain former president, footnote. Narcissists of every variety, footnote. Now don't mistake me, all of these things are very real and the harm they have on us in the world is also very real. But to me, The whole point of having faith, the whole point of believing in a power greater than ourselves is that it allows us to have a bigger story than the one that we tell ourselves. A bigger story than the one being shouted on social media and in in the news. A bigger story than the one being shouted inside our own heads. So when I'm stressed and lacking a sense of peace, When that happens, I tend to only see a few feet in front of myself, and the world can feel like it's closing in on me. But in the bigger picture, I can defiantly believe that God can convert our weariness, that God can turn the chaos into peace. In the bigger picture, I I defiantly believe that forgiveness is more powerful than resentment, that compassion is more powerful than judgment, that love is more powerful than than fear. In the bigger picture, I can defiantly believe that peace is more powerful than violence of any form, and that when we turn to God, when we turn away from the forces of violence, when we repent, steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Amen. I invite you to join me in singing our hymn of response today. This is a new hymn to many of us, I believe, so you'll need to use your hymns, and those of you who read music, uh, that is helpful today. So I invite you to stand as we sing this together. Uh, Michelle is going to sing the first verse through twice, that way we can get the melody of it, um, because this is a 
I don't know if I call it a complex melody or yeah. interesting melody. But I invite you to stand as we sing this together. Uh, Weary of all trumpeting, number 442. be seated. I invite you to some time to take a look at that hymn again and, and read through the words. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of music. Now come to a time of prayers of the people. If you have a prayer request that you would like to share, you can raise your hand and I'll be sure to call on you and repeat it so that we can all hear who you are praying for today. So well, beloveds, who are we praying for? Suzanne? Great. Suzanne talked to Joyce Loomis, who had a knee replacement recently. Uh, she is doing well and on the mend towards healing. So, God and your love. Others. Others. Pat? Uh, I have two. One for Chris
Yeah, prayers uh, first for Chris Doyle, who's one of our, uh, works with one of our partner organizations, HIV Alliance. Uh, she had a friend who was taken off of life support. So God and your love. Your prayers. Your prayers. And then for what was your caregiver's name again? Melody. For Melody, a caregiver that uh, is in Pat's home. Uh, as she deals with back pain and uh, getting uh, a minor, uh, what did you say? I'm sorry. Yeah, a minor surgery, so God in your love. Here are prayers. Okay. Yeah, prayers for the family of uh, Justin Easter, a physician who recently passed away. He was a friend and neighbor of Kay. God in your love. Here are your prayers. Julie? My friend Frankie who's relocating to Spokane and Julie Brookings. Yeah, for a friend Frankie who's relocating to Brookings, I'm hoping that she finds peace and love there. God in your love. Here are your prayers. Kathy? Yeah, for, for a friend Joan who's recovering from his hip surgery after a fall. God in your love. Yeah. Matthew? For my middle child as he is embracing his mental health recovery. Yeah, for Matthew's middle child as he is embracing mental health recovery. God in your love. Yeah. 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 Yes? Yeah, for an even heart and strong resolve, and that your words today may not just be your own. God, in your love. Yeah. Your yeah. Prayers. Uh, Judy. For joy for all the hard work that went into the Rose Winterfest celebration um, this weekend for mental health here in Southern Oregon. Yeah, a prayer of joy for all the on Thanksgiving for all the hard work that went into the Rose Winterfest, a, a fundraising festival here that. Uh, Raises money for mental health in Southern Oregon. God in your love. Yeah. Your prayers. Yes. Uh, just today I heard my uh, daughter-in-law's grandmother passed away at the age of 94. Mm. Uh, she's yeah, a prayer for Jill's daughter's uh, grandmother who passed away recently. God in your love. Yeah. Your prayers. <clears throat> Let's pray. God of peace. You raised up John the Baptizer as a herald calling us to turn to you, to orient our lives towards your love, your peace, your hope. As we joyfully await the coming of the Christ child, we pray to you for the needs of the church and the world, for all the prayers that have been spoken here and the ones that we carry within our hearts. Hear our humble prayer that we may serve you in holiness and faith and give voice to your presence among us. Amen. We are a community of peace, striving each day to live lives rooted in care and love for our neighbors, especially our neighbors facing violence. When you give to Newman, a portion of your gift is used to fund peace ministries around the world. In 2021, the United Methodist Church helped fund the beginnings of a museum in Washington, D.C., dedicated to the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine. The goal of the museum is to share a balanced view of the conflict, highlighting the everyday people caught in the middle of violence. When the offering plate comes around, you are invited to make a gift and or consider the ways you feel called to give to your church, your family, and your community. You may also make a financial gift to the church by visiting our website and clicking on the Give tab or by using the Church Connect app. Your generosity is deeply appreciated. Thank you.
I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing our doxology. Loving God, we give you thanks for these gifts which have been so generously given. We ask that you bless these gifts, that they may be instruments of your peace in our often chaotic world. Amen. I want you to remain, or actually we have communion today, so you can sit down. <laughs> you don't want to stand all the way through that. In the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open communion table, which means that all people are welcome to come to the table. You do not need to be a member of this church or a, a member of any church or even claim uh, your faith as Christianity to come to this table. This is not our table. It's not my table. This is God's table. And everyone is invited who wishes to have a deeper connection with love, who wishes a moment of peace, to be a part of a community of peace as we share this holy meal together. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You spoke to us through the prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness, like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth in the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear, you, who fear you from generation to generation. You pull down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low estate. You fill the hungry with good things and you send the rich away empty. So your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, God with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross and by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread. He said, take Eat. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and shared it with his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many. 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and online and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and love of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his love. By your spirits, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes, the final victory, and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So just as with any family meal, I need some volunteers to help serve today. So if that is something you would like to help with, please come on up. I need three people. The bread of life broken for you. The cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As I said once before, all are welcome to this table. You do not need to be a member of this church or any church. And we do have a gluten-free option available for those who need it. Come, the table's been set.
Will you all join me in this prayer of thanksgiving as it's up on the screen? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn today, our closing carol, is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. That's number 218 in the large hymnal. I invite you to stand as we sing this together as you are comfortable doing so. Beloved, receive this blessing. May God's peace be with you in your hearts, even during this season of chaos. May we all breathe peace and be peace to one another. Amen. Amen. I invite you to reach out your hands in signs of love and blessing towards one another as we sing together our sung benediction.
before you rush over to coffee hour, I have a couple of quick instructions on that. Uh, it is a smaller space than usual, so we invite you to get your cookies and your coffee and then move away from those tables and have your conversations elsewhere. All right. So, and you're welcome to come on over into the sanctuary, too, to have your goodies. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Grown a little older and I need a little angel sitting 